Hey there, and welcome to Combs Design. Today I'm building a white oak planter stand that's going to go with the Nelson bench that I built last week. This project essentially starts with the same exact milling from last week, so let's go ahead and skip through all that and get straight to the glue up for the top. This glue up took a bit more thought since I end up using a circle cutting jig in addition to the biscuit joiner. I need to be sure that I don't place biscuits anywhere that would later be exposed when I use the circle cutting jig. Now with all of that in place, I can go ahead and cut my biscuit mortises. This shot is how Chris at Four Eyes shows how he cuts his dominoes. I think it's a great way of explaining exactly what the biscuit joiner does. Now I will go ahead and glue up this panel so it can start drying before I move on to the legs. The biscuit joiner is a new tool to me and I absolutely love how much better my seams are once the panel is done curing. Now that the top is in clamps, I can go ahead and move on to the leg assemblies. I'll first make a cut at eight degrees along my leg blanks that would later yield two legs each. I chose 8 degrees because this would match the angle of the legs on the Nelson bench. After cutting my top angle, I was able to make matching cuts along the bottom. And after I have both these angles cut, I can put the blanks in my Rockler tapering jig and cut out my legs, getting two leg pieces per leg blank. If you don't own one of these Rockler tapering jigs or you'd rather build your own, I'll put a link in the video's description to a video by Brad over at Fix This Build That. He shows how to make one of these tapering jigs by yourself. The first set of joinery that I cut are my half lap joints that join my two stretchers together. You'll see I made a mistake here and I made my half lap joints just a tad too big. I'll show you how I fix this later on in the video. After cutting those, I could cut my half lap joints that connect the stretchers to my legs. And you'll see something interesting here. I cut those half laps on my stretchers way oversized as far as the length is concerned. This will allow me to go back later and flush cut everything to the actual leg itself instead of trying to nail the measurement on the table saw in one shot. I ran my pieces over the very top of the blade to clean up some of the joints since I don't have a flat bottom blade or a dado stack yet. After a fairly easy day of cutting joints, I was able to go ahead and glue up the leg assemblies. One thing I made sure to do was to get a ton of glue in these joints. When I made the Nelson bench last week, I went with a lot less glue so there would be less cleanup on the back end. In hindsight, I wish that I'd put more glue in my joints and then just dealt with the cleanup later. To get a head start on my next day in the shop, I went ahead and applied epoxy to any holes and imperfections in the assemblies while everything was still in clamps. This way, the wood glue and the epoxy could set up overnight and I could address the cleanup the next morning. The next day I was able to cut my half laps connecting the legs to the stretchers flush and I could use a chisel and heat gun to remove the excess epoxy. After some work with a chisel to address the epoxy and wood glue, I could then go ahead and sand everything with 80 and 120 grit sandpaper. I can't express how thankful I am for all the support that I've gotten on such a new channel. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. This is the best thing you can do to help me continue to produce free content on YouTube. 
At this point, I went ahead and glued my two leg assemblies together so that they can start drying before I move on to the top. Earlier, I mentioned that I cut my half laps a little oversized. To fix this, I cut a small shim out of white oak and was able to hammer this into the gap. It not only conceals my mistake here, but it provides extra structural stability. While the glue was still wet, I went ahead and flush cut the shim so I could rub some sawdust in any gaps and conceal any smaller gaps around it. I quickly made a circle cutting jig out of a scrap piece of plywood and used it to make light passes to cut out a circle. The router did slip at one point and I ended up with some imperfections along part of the edge. With some sanding and adding this chamfer that was already part of the design, it cleaned up very well. I drilled a hole in the top and a matching hole through the middle of the half lap joints in the stretchers to accommodate drainage that I knew my flower pot would need. I did a little bit more cleanup with some sandpaper and a chisel and I got my legs and top ready for final assembly. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I often use these figure eight desktop fasteners to attach the legs to the top of the workpiece. Here I am cutting a slightly oversized Forstner bit to accommodate this figure eight fastener. I attached my legs to the circular top and I hammered a half inch piece of PEX tubing to give some more protection to the drainage hole. Now that assembly was fully complete, I added 10 coats of a spray on oil based polyurethane to the planter stand. The feet that I used on the Nelson bench were a bit too large for these legs, so I used some smaller nail-in feet to keep the stand slightly elevated out of any pooling water that may collect on my patio. Between the half lap joints and issues cutting a circle, I made more mistakes on this project than I would have liked. However, mistakes are part of woodworking and with a little bit of ingenuity, you can really fix any problem that you make in a project. I love how this very simple planter came out and that all the angles complement the Nelson bench. These pieces are similar enough to go together, yet different enough to not be a complete matching set. I really think it completes the look of the patio that I started last week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. 